When engineer Rolf Witwer retired, his dream project was designing this energy-efficient home near the town of Port Broughton in South Australia. Rooftop solar was a big part of his plan. I think one of the underrated resources that Australia has is we've got lots of sun. But on sunny days, the system cut out. I was looking to see my return on investment flowing in and I was a bit horrified to see that it was constantly shutting down and restarting up to 13 times a day. Despite rewiring his rooftop solar system and spending thousands on a new battery, his system can still only export a fraction of the electricity it produces. As soon as the battery finished charging, it started to feed in, the voltage went high and the output was limited, so there's a big hole in my chart every day. The South Australian network company says it checked the voltage when Rolf's system was first installed. But like many people who've invested in solar, Rolf insists there's an ongoing problem. Voltage is the force that moves electrical current through power lines to your home, and it should stay within an allowable range to prevent wasted energy, bigger power bills and burnt out appliances. If households with rooftop solar export their power, that can increase the voltage nearby, pushing it over the limit of what's allowed. But the University of New South Wales has sampled voltages at 12,000 properties on the grid and found there's a different problem. It found the power supplied by the networks is close to and sometimes over the voltage limit, while rooftop solar has little impact. This is really important because it encourages to actually have a look at all the factors that are leading to higher voltages in the grid and not just pointing the figure, finger at rooftop solar. These accusations that solar is causing these grid problems are leading to some really dangerous policy proposals. For example, that solar households should pay for exporting their solar to the grid. But what we need is a proper evidence base in looking at all the factors, including the background voltage levels set by networks. The Energy Security Board that commissioned the research says there are signs the poles and wires companies may not be playing by the rules. But the network's peak body says the networks often can't tell what's happening on their poles and wires. We need more information. This is the challenge. It's knowing what is going on in the grid and where the challenges are. But they want a cost-effective fix. Well, the first thing the networks are not doing is spending exorbitant amounts of money. You could build a lot more grid that would help manage these problems significantly, but that would pump up everyone's power bill. So that's what networks are not doing. What we are doing is a balanced range of measures, looking at transformers in key areas and whether adjustments can be made in there, getting smarter transformers put in. At his workshop in Toowoomba, electrician Peter Sutran is wiring up an off-grid system for a client in remote Queensland. But most of his customers are on the grid and many have problems with voltage. Quite often a lot of these customers, they've been told they're on the end of the line or something like that. Or they've had lights flickering or lights really bright and blowing and they, they have an inkling there's some strange things going on with their power at their house. Peter regularly deals with the Queensland Poles and Wires companies Ergon and Energex, letting them know that the voltage on the network is running too high. I will say I think the network has a very difficult job a very large job in trying to balance the voltages across across Queensland but at the same time I'm not really sure if they are doing very much about it they're not they're not letting anyone know too much. While he's known about the problem for years he says it's only because solar systems can measure voltage that people are beginning to realise the issue is widespread. The solar industry has definitely taken quite a bit of heat for existing grid voltage problems. Anyone who says that solar is a cause of these problems, they're just, that's just inaccurate because th there's always been voltage problems. It's, it's a visible problem now because solar exists. It's not like solar's cause the problem.
Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.